I'm Corbett Lunsford. I'm a home performance expert. Uh, and when Grace and I, Grace is my wife, and I were designing and building the tiny lab, uh, we wanted to show how you could easily control all of the invisible stuff that happens in houses. That generally is how it feels, how it smells, how it sounds. Uh, so that we could teach people to use these techniques on houses of all sizes. So this house is a finely tuned house. And when I say that this house is the most scientifically superior house in all 50 states, no one can argue with me because the fact is that I have statistics and metrics that quantify what this house is doing at any given moment. So that's what the tiny house is for, uh, in, in our opinion, is to teach people about how all houses should be built. So the tiny lab is a wedge-shaped house. It's got a shed roof, and that was really important to us because it's built for the road. So we wanted it to shed uh, tree limbs and uh, power lines and things like that that you don't get if you have a pitched roof. So at the front, it's the same height as a UPS truck, which is 10.8. We had to replace the piece of trim at the back because the tree limbs that do go up, they would catch on that bit right there and just they eventually just tore it completely off. Uh, the shield is on the front, the metal, and then the tender part, which is the wood, is on the back. We got away with not injuring it almost at all, except for at the very, very end when we were actually on this property parking it for the last time we backed into our wall. Uh, it has windows where we need them. So there's five windows in the place, and that's including the front door. And then we have over here, one of the things you can see in the blue shielded part is at our kitchen. There is up high a kitchen exhaust vent. That is incredibly important. You must have that, especially in a tiny house, uh, because you want all the cooking gases from propane and also moisture that's being generated when you cook with electric also to go outside. And then burning smells and stuff like that. That's like at the end of the list. And underneath it is a bigger hood, and that hood covers a, an eight inch hole that opens Mechanically, there's a damper whose job is to open automatically when it senses that the fan is on. It opens an eight-inch hole in the wall and allows air to come in to replace the air that's leaving. So that has the effect of equalizing the pressure in the house. And pressure imbalances is a thing that, again, invisible dynamics, what we're talking about. You will not realize it until you have something horrible happen with your toilet, with your uh, moisture in the walls, with backdrafting of things like water heaters and stuff like that, um, combustion appliances in the house, like little propane stoves, uh, all that is incredibly dangerous when you start talking about pressure. So having the pressure be equalized in the house is really important. That's why we have all of the monitors around and the gauges in the house to constantly kind of test what the house is doing at any given moment. So that is really important. We have a lot of the standard features that people have, a water bag inside. This house was built to be off-grid completely, so water off-grid and electric off-grid. And so we have the ability to go onto, just like you guys do, solar panels, or um, we have a battery bank so that the fridge runs while we're actually traveling. The ventilation system is kind of interesting. So the, the house travels in that direction, obviously. This is passenger side, the other side is driver side. Driver side is where the door is, and therefore also all of the things about fresh air intake. So the fresh air intake for the ventilation system, which is balanced, is on the driver side. All of the exhaust side stuff is on this side. So the water heater uh, exhaust, the exhaust for the stale air from the bathroom, uh, that's the, also the part of the equalized ventilation system. And then the kitchen exhaust are all on the passenger side. So we, we have a separation of incoming fresh air and outgoing stale air. And that's really important also. You don't want them in the same place that you have backdrafting. So heating and cooling, very important. A lot of people put um, pellet stoves or gas heaters in tiny houses, which is a very misinformed way to go in general. You do not need that much heating. If you're gonna build it right, and a lot of people are using things like spray foam insulation, which is very airtight and insulating, this is the biggest thing that you'll probably ever need. So this is a half a ton heat pump. So it's gonna take heat out of the house in summertime and give heat to the house in wintertime, and it's totally silent and it does its job all the time. So we've taken this house to Death Valley, we've taken, we live in Atlanta now, um, and it's, it works all the time, which we love. Airtight connections here, you'll see all kinds of airtightness details around the house, that's really important. So as we move around, you'll see that this is 
cedar siding, uh, which is tongue and groove. I didn't want to be overly ambitious. All of the siding that you see is mounted on top of what's called a rain screen, which is a 3 8 inch ventilation gap. So even if water does get behind this, because I'm not an expert in flashing, if you look at the flashing on my house, like the trim, I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing. That's okay, because if water gets behind this, it's fine. This is not the end of the house. The end of the house, really, the control layers are behind this. There's a water control layer, an air tightness control layer, and then a vapor control layer, and then all the insulation for the heat control, etc. So behind this, there's a gap where air is actually going up and evaporating any air, any water that gets behind, behind this. And that's a, the safest way to build in general. So this is kitchen exhaust. You must have this period. It must go outside. Don't even, don't, we can get into why on my YouTube channel. This is something that you probably haven't seen before. This is a makeup air damper. So this is an eight inch hole in the wall that's gonna open up automatically on a motor when the fan turns on and that equalizes the house in uh, pressure. So that when you have air leaving the house, I now have air going into the house to replace it. And there's just this little tiny loop instead of having to pull the air back through the toilet, going through the bathroom, coming out and trying to get out here. You don't want that. So these two things act in harmony and they're tuned together. And that's what the whole house is. It's built to be tuned on the enclosure, which is the air tightness and insulation and tuned in the engines, which move heat and air around. And then you tune those two things to each other. And that's basically what the tiny lab is. And by the way, I'm an idiot. Uh, I've never built a house before. If I can do this, any builder in the world could do a better job with this. So the fact that we're out there saying this is the best house that's ever been built should be embarrassing for the building professionals. And that's why we built this is because we got to get our act together. So if you look at the, the roof section on this front triangle here, this is the mechanical shed. This is where all the brains of the house live you'll see one, two, three, four, five vents just on this section. And there's six, seven over there. And then there's two that you don't even see underneath. If you look at a normal house, how many vents are between the house and outside, you'll probably come up short of what is here. What these things do is make sure that contaminants get out of the house, make sure that all the combustion appliances like water heaters get fresh air, making sure that the pressure is equalized and making sure that stale air gets out of the house and fresh air gets in in equal measure. And so you want the pressure to be equalized. You want as much stale air to be coming out as fresh air going in. You want to dial in that number so that you're not just guessing on how much fresh air you need. Uh, and by the way, we replace all the air inside this house every hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It's running constantly. Um, so inside the mechanical shed, it's a little bit of a mess in here because we've added things like, you know, cell phone boosters and Wi-Fi and things like that. But essentially got our electrical system, which at this point is just a backup. I'm not using this. It's not a sunny day. And so we're not worried about collecting solar. Also, I did not build this to be um, never giving money to utilities. The best way to learn to love the grid is to go off grid. Now that I have lived off grid truly, I love the fact that there is some place where I can just plug my house in and never worry about it because you essentially become a farmer for electricity when you're in that business of being off grid. Propane and all the combustible stuff is down here underneath this. So the upper cell is where all the stuff that has sparks uh, goes. Propane sinks, by the way, it goes down, it does not go up. Electrical transformer to take us up to 240 because that's what you need for um, heat pumps for the, the mini split. Like I said, all the electrical components, this is the equalizing ventilator. It's uh, um, taking stale air out, putting fresh air in, rubbing them up against each other to make them equal temperature and equal humidity. The standard water heater that probably everyone has in this community that is insulated on the hot line, not insulated on the cold. That's interesting. There's all kinds of performance issues that we've found after living in this for a year and a half. Um, for example, this right here, this is my toilet. Uh, exhaust from the composting toilet. The composting toilets have their own dedicated exhaust system, which is cool because even when you're using the toilet, you can't smell what's happening. This was not insulated before. And what happens when you send hot, moist air down this line and it goes into a cold, unconditioned shed is that you'll get water collecting in this. And the water is flavored, interestingly, I will say that. So uh, now it's insulated, now that I have corrected my mistake. I am also gonna go ahead and put this up through the roof with this extra line. So I'm gonna put it up through some trim and have it exhaust up and out because that is just gonna be better for everyone. If you're walking around outside, you might catch a whiff of compost. Even though it doesn't smell as bad as a normal toilet would, it's still not a super pleasant experience. So that's kind of what is going on in here. Uh, we have all of the stuff that's necessary to make any tiny house work. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't know how a lot of other tiny houses make this work because you need almost all of this stuff 
And if you don't have a dedicated place to put it where you can get at all of it, it just makes your life a lot more difficult. So please do think about this before you build because you're gonna need extra space to put your mechanicals. Welcome to the tiny lab, come on in. So this is the inside of the tiny lab. It's 200 square feet, uh, eight by 24. And we have an under loft bedroom and a dining loft above. A dedicated workspace, a dedicated play space for my two year old daughter. And, um, and then plenty of cabinetry for storage for things like shoes and pantry, vacuum cleaner, the essentials. Um, and then this is my kitchen, which I really love because there's actually lots of workable space and um, ah, a big giant sink, which is great because often I have dishes drying over here. Um, but also when you have other people helping you cook dinner, which we really like to do, we like to have little dinner parties, um, you can have two workable sinks, which is nice. So this is a three eye um, stove top, which is traditionally found in sailboats. And we also have a Brone exhaust system. I'll turn on the light for you. And you'll notice these little holes um, that kind of are small and then get bigger. And that is decorative, but more importantly, when you're cooking, you have flame impingement. Um, you are creating carbon monoxide. It's just what's happening. <laughs> and um, I like cooking with gas. I didn't want to do induction because of the electric needs. Um, obviously, didn't really care to work with electric because I don't like to cook with electric. And gas has been great. The three eyes have been great. And this uh, hood, when you turn it on, I'll turn it on very quiet first of all you can probably hear it a little bit and if you listen closely the house has all just gone and that's because it's a super airtight house and now if you put your hands down here you can actually start to feel the air which is starting to come out because the damper has just opened and the fan is now getting quieter because it's not working so hard you can barely hear it now right because this fresh air is coming in, it's trapping the carbon monoxide and it's sending it outside, away from my lungs, away from my blood, and therefore my body, which is a good thing. Our bathroom is actually very large and has high ceilings. The extra height also helps give more room for our changing table because we have one tiny human and we're about to have a second tiny human. <laughs> so we've got diapers and wipes and also a mirror, which is really nice for a lot of hello entertainment um, with the babies. So there were a couple of reasons why we decided to put our bed down and not up. Again, um, we had just had a baby. So we hit the road when she was six weeks old and I did not want to be climbing up and down from um, a loft, basically, <laughs> when I had to use the restroom in the middle of the night or when Corbett was getting up to help change a diaper. And so um, we did put in a couple of stability factors. We have our office right here, which is very, very sturdy. We did put in this grab pole as well to kind of like help you up at night when you're really tired. Um, and then also you have these stairs here that also help you up. So, so getting up from your bed in the middle of the night has never really been a problem. Also, it gave us more room to put in a whole closet space over here. So we've got two sets of shelves and then we have a baby bed, which you kind of can't see because of the exercise ball right now. Um, but this also has curtains. And so we drop the curtains down and we're able to close off this space. And um, when I put Nanette down to bed or the new baby down to bed, um, they can have a nice little dark, quiet space and go to bed. And we can still be using the office, cleaning the dishes, hanging out upstairs and um, enjoying life and not feeling like we have to be completely closed off. Um, alternatively, Nanette is now big enough that we have a pack and play that we set up on that side of the house and we sometimes close off the <laughs> curtains. So um, this really becomes a very private place for us and the cats love it too. And we have little Christmas lights that um, are in the rafters of the underloft. As you can see, I'm sitting up 
like not even down and I still have plenty of head space which is great um, our bed we actually went through two different kind of mattresses this one is a sleep number bed now and um, we really like that because we don't have any like moisture absorption issues we can clean all the linens and I get a soft bed and Corby gets firm bed <laughs> which helps especially um, as I'm putting on all this extra weight for the new baby so over here we have um, a little disheveled but closet space for Corbett's clothes and my clothes and Annette has a shelf and then I'll move the exercise ball and this is um, kind of one of those like reading cushions and then this space over here is actually where the baby will sleep. Um, this is where Nanette slept until she was about 18 months old. Now as you can see it has become a baby doll hangout <laughs> but soon it will be um, the new baby space as well. And then we do also have um, a hammock style crib that we can hang from a hook right here. So you can be standing over there and access the baby easily. But yeah, so easy sleeping for four because Nanette still climbs into our bed. <laughs> uh, so this is our dining booth and also, let's see, who's gonna do the trick for me? our scratch pad. Hi, come on. Oh, good boy. Good boy. So, if you give them a place to scratch, they won't tear up the rest of your world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the great thing about these uh, benches is they are custom made. I actually made them myself. So this booth um, is nice and cushioned, but it also pulls up. So we have this additional storage for the essential wipes and napkins, um, a memory book, a couple extra things, odds and ends, but it keeps things tucked away and cleaner and little hands off of everything. Uh, this also does become my recording booth. So this is a sound dampening kind of mobile booth and um, I have my own little microphone kits and I just hook this up to my iPad and I do a lot of voiceover auditions because I am an actress that is part of my profession so it's great so it's been a really nice space for that um, we easily seat six people here sometimes um, comfortably two people on either couch uh, although you probably could squeeze in a third Nanette always at the end, and then whoever feels really confident, uh, which is normally my little brother, gets the cajon seat, which is this drum that we have underneath, and we'll put it right there at the end of the table, open up the table, and have a big dinner party. Plenty of room. And if you look, ready? Ah, I am five foot eight inches, and I definitely have plenty of clearance, so. We had a father and a son who were like 6'4 and 6'8 sitting up here and they actually said it was surprisingly roomy. Mm -hmm. As chair of the board, let their haste and effort come aboard. In me. Like making a diamond, it certainly isn't with grace. Hey guys, Alexis and Christian here with Tiny House Expedition. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And click left or right for more tiny house stories and tours.